All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode. All right. <coughs> so, to begin, a very interesting episode, a very interesting thought. Uh, arose to me and I was like oh my god I gotta go talk about this <clears throat> and so I was thinking about the nature of reality and if I was to explain to the viewers my journey as one in eight billion uh, as one human being on this planet how my experience how my relationship as a being like the type of relationship I have with my own mind, body and attention, it has shifted, especially when it comes to the nature of the mind. You know, they say, uh, you know, uh, reach for the stars and then you'll like land on the moon or something. Like there's, <laughs> there's a saying like go all out and you'll still attain something. It's as if I had a fascination for the mystery of the soul as a, as a kid. But I realized that it, it was as if the soul was like the higher levels and the lower levels before you could like a video game, you know, get to the soul. It was as if there was a level of physical existence that had to be attended to. And then there was a level of psychological existence. You see, the title of today's episode, I think, is one of the most remarkable questions ever asked. And how can there be individual identity when there is novelty? And another way this can be said is how can there be individuals when there is change? Okay? So this is very important. Because I noticed something. Are the human species and its use of language is creating the mirage in the desert of a dynamic, interconnected and changing world that we are actually individuals. You know what I'm starting to realize? I'm starting to realize that the brain of every homo sapien, every human being, it has actually duped them. You know, they would say the brain is a trickster. This was something that the ancients would say. They would call it the monkey mind. That means it's as if you try to do something, the mind would jump somewhere else. You know, in today's day, uh, day and age, they call it ADHD, which is hilarious. Because back in the day, the yogis acknowledged that that was the nature, the basic nature of the human mind. The human mind will not concentrate until it finds value. And all those people who have ADHD is because simply they don't have a selected value in the moment. <clears throat> their free will has not made a decision and so the world takes them for a ride I went through this do you know I would say that um, this might sound hilarious but I think I actually became an actual human being <laughs> do you know I've always been you know I'm, I'm this biological entity you know this little kid you know grow, who's grown up and, and at some point there came a realization this is when I knew that I had matured as a being in existence, not as a being in society, not cultural programs that are different. I noticed that man may not have, may not be able to like, let's say, okay, I'll give, I'll say it this way. Traditional spiritualism, mysticism, and organized superstition. <laughs> I wondered about the nature of my own mind. I did this. And it was weird. <laughs> Do you know? It was strange. Because I met a state of my own being that is the presence of the whole moment. Do you know? We think we are in a world. Our body, 
is under the impression it's in a world. Our mind is under the impression it's being the world. And our soul is like, yo, I'm watching this. Like, the soul's eating popcorn from another dimension. Watching the mind try to, like, <clears throat> command the body. <laughs> But anyways, there's there's something significant here I'm trying to convey. And I'm trying to say, like, when we look at human life, what do we see? We see uh, pretty much a creature that is living through nouns and verbs. <clears throat> it is way harder to live as a verb. And the closest thing we have to living as a verb is direct experience. To live as a noun is an indirect experience. So all those people who believe in things, they are indirectly accessing truth. Like if there was, if there was truth, and you had a bunch of people and one of them was like, I believe in truth, you know? And then one of them was like, I know truth. Like what would the difference be between someone who knows truth? They're like, yo, this enlightened guy knows truth like it was his classmate. <laughs> He knows truth as if they were bodies in another dimension. Do you know what I mean? <clears throat> you know, imagine a very advanced being, you know, enters another, you know, is teleported from one universal sector to another universal sector. And then they realize, oh my God, this other universal sector has its own different God. Its own geometric universal constitution. You see what it is, I, I have come to, the, there. you know, I caught on to this. I was like, pretty much like, okay, um, ever since um, Mandelbrot uh, in mathematics brought forth the idea of the fractal, which Plato and the ancient scholars has suggested to, which is pretty much this idea as above, so below. So pretty much human beings are considering that they are the small and the big. When it comes to the small, we're looking at the microcosm and the macrocosm, right? So we are like a microcosmic entity that finds itself in a macrocosm and so it's like, oh my God, whether I believe in, in God or not, there is so much of the world unexplored. There's so many things humanity doesn't know and all we can do is literally trust the future. You know, I was like, yo, what if religion was some sort of coded message? Do you know, it was a coded metaphoric message, you know, a metaphoric codex. Do you know what I'm saying? It's, 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 it's another way of saying imagine a book is written and you read that book but the whole purpose of that book is to point to another book you have to read do you know and I will tell you I, I'm a person who I have had access to uh, my intuition before I had a conscious realization I could maneuver and navigate my inner realms Pretty much, I'm a, I would say I'm a being that has entered this universal sector to remind, not to teach, to remind the beings that are here that multidimensionality is as natural as being singular. And when we look at human culture right now, we treat ourselves as an individual. And, and what is the cost of treating ourselves as an individual? We have made an individual the main focal point of life. And this is really strange because we're living at a time right now where I would say we're at the peak of individual worship, celebrities. <clears throat> it's like you know you gave you gave you you gave like um, a cyber nervous uh, a cyber information network right <clears throat> to a bunch of apes. Do you know? And these apes suddenly became cyber sapiens. Do you know what, what I'm saying? Like. We are no longer just human beings. We have been influenced by too many unnatural systems. The first unnatural system was conscious behavior, was behavior, let's say. The second one was in some sense language and individual subjective identity. These are all strange things that nothing in nature has done yet. Do you know what I'm saying? It's as if we're Hercules and all the other spe our species is like Hercules and all the other species in nature, they're like the citizens that we're saving. Do you know, like we're, we're that superior of a being, <clears throat> you know, it's like Hercules asked his mother, you know, mom, where's dad? And, you know, Hercules, you know, the mother of Hercules was like, your father's in the sky, son. And Hercules was like, oh, no, is my father dead? And, you know, and Hercules' mother was like, no, son, your father is actually a god. You know, it's like... <laughs> You know, 
that means you know even like right now you know they were saying that there's like right now there's a ridiculous amount of statistics of single families do you know there's this whole movement going on where it's as if you know the mistake of single motherhood is 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 like a heavy one do you know or single fatherhood you know single fatherhood is easier i would say but 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 at the same time what i'm trying to say is that we have it's like wondering about the archetype of the great father okay and i'm not saying this as a religious person because let me tell you something the moment i realized god is inconceivable i understood why religion what religion was pointing to you see many people don't realize religion is pointing to faith in the totality of being you know it's as if it's it's like truth is everywhere and so you are supposed to have faith in something that is everywhere so what does that mean having faith in the moment what is the metaphorical coded message <clears throat> you know in religious books do you know and i would say this is one theological I'm, i like let me tell the viewers something one of my hobbies is to like find ancient books you know and to try to see what the authors were trying to say do you know <clears throat> i'm like a you know an archaeologist of concepts you know in my spare time <laughs> <clears throat> let me find a more you know worldly song okay so so back back to the point i'm trying to make i'm trying to say like yeah okay what's going on like what do we have what do we see and so we're seeing a creature that was a physical organism and as much as you know uh you know you can be as much of a materialist and atheist you want to be but you can't ignore how evolution its destination where the bird landed after billions of years of like adjustment was on a branch where an object became a subject to, them, to themselves and right now the idea of who we are is non-physical but the body of us is physical and we have been living this whole time with an invisible name tag you know and an invisible personality which behind our eyes is our own inner realms but to others you know who god knows who they, who they think we are <laughs> do you know what i'm saying you know there's been moments where i've i've I, in my mind i've been like i've i'm such an excellent person do you know and then I, at the same time i've been like yo what if there's angles i don't see you know what if there's ways, you know, what if, what if we don't realize it? What if this whole time we're a multidimensional being and for example, imagine you're a rich person and you do something cruel and you think there's no consequences, nothing happened, you know, it's like, you know, just a material being getting by. It's like periodic table doesn't care about morality, do you know? And so you could, you could get, you could, this, you could ground, you could be, reach that, that, you could solidify yourself to that level. But one thing you will soon realize as a human being, as a being, and this is where mysticism really begins, is that what is more valuable than money and physical power is how awareness knows itself. That means we're not here just so that, you know, we all have heroes and champions and, and, and great people till the end of time coming and guiding us. You know, it's like all the ascended masters and the enlightened beings are like, okay, how many, how many eons are we going to guide this species? It's like, wake up, kiddo, you know? <laughs> Can you imagine? Like, that would be so embarrassing, you know? Imagine, like, you know, you're late and somebody wakes you up right and imagine you know you're asleep and god wakes you up to the true reality and you're like oh my god i was late to truth you know <laughs> and let me tell you this system we're built in i realized something hilarious no political system can be as advanced and as up-to-date as its most advanced and up-to-date individual which means that political systems are like shadows that we're using to manage the light and let me tell you what's going to happen. The greatest sort of governance and everybody, every human being innately and just instinctually knows this. The greatest type of governance is self-governance. And there's this idea that if 8 billion beings could self-govern, do you know? 
in some sense they wouldn't need a government they wouldn't need an other structure but at the same time because the human being is not a rational android and robot that's like all right i'm gonna do the right thing all the time perfectly all the time dude it's like we're not that kind of like we're not a freaking android do you know and we're human beings that have an emotional dimension and in some sense we have an inner abstract domain what that means is what thinking is is you see something real and your mind tries to find abstract uh, familiar patterns from your own past to try to make sense of it <clears throat> we are living in a world where I have noticed it's strange. Let me tell you what's happened. Pretty much it went from object worship to subject worship, uh, 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 and then person worship, and then from person worship, in some sense, how can I tell you, we're still in that domain. Like if, if to be honest, if somebody was like Mr. Within, aren't we advanced right now? Isn't 2023 like an advance, like an advancing civilization? And I'll be like, no. No, we are literally like repeating savage algorithm patterns. What it means is that it's like, imagine you saw a human being in 2023 behaving like a caveman. Do you know, in a, in a parking lot of a mall, right? Like literally, like imagine a caveman was teleported to the parking lot of a, of a Costco or something, Do you know? <laughs> And so what we are doing now in 2023 is like caveman-like compared to how far we can see the world in our inner realms. You know, it is strange. You know, the universal position is kind of like, all right, human being, I'm going to give you a mind that can imagine what you want and you will desire it. But when you imagine it, it's not going to materialize in front of you. Because can you imagine, guys, can you imagine if there was a machine in the future and this is like, God forbid, this moment comes in history, right? Because it would be kind of messed up. But it would be like, imagine this machine comes in the future that anytime you press it and you just tell it something, it creates it for you. And imagine people never leave their homes because they have this machine that gives them everything. And so this is the savageness of freedom, dear viewers. Be careful because sometimes when you are given freedom, do you know, there's this strange law, like there's this, how would I say it? <clears throat> it's as if freedom is the greatest moment to deceive when you give freedom, you know? Many people know this. I mean, Sun Tzu probably like wrote books on this, shit. you know? <laughs> But anyways, what I'm trying to say is, if you're a philosopher, if you're a scholar, if you're a human being who um, has a curiosity for the mystery of where we are as beings, right? This is the question that's being asked, the challenge that needs to be surpassed. How can there be individual identity when there is novelty? So what is individual identity? Individual identity means your past is giving you shape. This is what it means, right? When somebody comes and says, I am this, I am that. What is that? That's their past talking. That's literally how the brain, like a camera, just records, 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 and it edits it inside itself too, you know? And edited versions of reality are constantly contrasted with the actual. But here's the beauty of life. It's as if human beings are in a real world, but they can't see it. And they're all trying to climb the mountain to see something that is here before them. For what do you think enlightenment is? The lights in the room before you saw the darkness. This is the question. Pretty much I'm this philosopher, you know, this philosopher archetype saying like, yo, we're changing new dimensions are being added an identity is a snapshot photo right that means our identities are theater performances when human beings communicate they don't notice the depth the depth of intensity but in a thousand years from now human beings will be so aware of their inner realms they will be way more aware of their inner realms most likely they'll be like yo this guy was uh, this guy noticed you know <laughs> So
So, dear viewers, anybody who's been listening, you know, I've noticed that, you know, some some viewers, you know, I, I, I speak in verse. And what that means is I rhythmically communicate. And sometimes when I rhythmically communicate, I become selfless. And I feel that energy, maybe uh, it's shared with the viewers. But let me tell you this. This is the great secret. Do you know, I'm if I, if I was like Yoda, like t teaching Luke Skywalker how to use the Force, I would say the secret is this. You realize you're new and you trust it. And you realize that trust is one of the only things we can do after analysis I want to say more words but I just I said analysis like <laughs> anybody who wants to serve uh, civilization 2.0 which is the you know main vision you know mr. within strategy to indefinitely bypass extinction you serve civilization 2.0 by finding advanced beings and how you do it is first you find yourself. So that means what I'm trying to do is I, I, don't, I, I later on realized this, right? At first I was like this oblivious guy who was like, <clears throat> you know, this oblivious guy who was like, yo, I'm going to give 10,000 talks in this lifetime. But little did I know my search for mystical truth was leading me to some of the most advanced audiences in this realm beings who have experienced beyond the norm right and what is normality normality is whatever you're looking at when you're alive that's it things become normal when they're accepted you know like back in the day who knows maybe there was a tribe maybe there was a hunter gatherer tribe <coughs> No. <clears throat> I wanted to say, how do we know? <clears throat> Sorry, guys, hold on a second. Excuse me. Sorry guys, I don't know what happened, you know.
Sorry guys, I, I went into this coughing episode, I had to just mute it. The idea I wanted to share was that I was saying we have this idea that back in the day there were hunter-gatherer tribes but we don't know the psychology of these individuals in these tribes and we could make this argument that imagine to have an individual identity is like walking so you got to teach the child how to be an individual. Sorry guys, I'm gonna <coughs> maybe type out the <coughs> rest of the episode. Pretty much, I, I was just gonna. I'm gonna finish the last thought. I was gonna. I was just saying, what if there were um, tribes, hunter-gatherer tribes, with multidimensional psychologies? You know, that means what if like there was a tribe of like ten people, and each of them, each person had ten personalities. 10 different personalities so it's like a tribe of 10 people was experienced as a tribe of a hundred do you know psychologically like there had to be a phase in human evolution you know in like primitive tribe psychology where people didn't know how to be individuals and every day they would wake up and be something new you know so we can say novelty is a primitive state and so this is what I'm trying to say like how are we being individuals in a changing world can somebody answer this I think what we are how we're being individuals are is in snapshot moments of time in the space-time continuum which is false and this is such a huge realization and discovery because it means we have never been individuals in a world. We have been a process within a greater process. We have been a movement. The soul is dynamic. It's moving. It's like cavalry, you know, conquering the, uh, uh, you know, uh, uncharted space. Like, you know, there has to be, like, you know, probably, like, interstellar Christopher Columbus archetypes, you know. What it is, is this world is designed like a game. And this game has shape, has appearance. And when you realize, when you actually start playing the game, that's why karma is here. Karma is given to beings that care to take this world seriously and then begin to discover their starting point. So many people think karma is a bad thing. It, it's just content. You know, there might be like somebody like, you know, Gary Wee shouting like content, more content, people build more content, right? You know, it's all about content, content, content. And imagine a yogi, like a Himalayan yogi would see Gary V and would be like, yeah, that extra content is extra karma. You see, this is the bizarre thing. The ancients wanted to leave this world. For the modern beings, this world has become our home somehow. Do you know? It's like we're not wondering, is there something afterwards? Is there some, was there something before? Is it just what our eyes see? Is, is, does it make sense to just process reality in accordance to like sensory perception? We're like, do you know what I'm saying? We're like filtering something and thinking what we're filtering is reality, you know? People have never seen the world. They have seen their world plus how their brain is happening.
I would share this that in this episode I'm just bringing forth this idea that it's a psychological luxury to be an individual and the fact that we're individuals in a social system this is in some sense a luxury and a phase of nature it's a speed thing right now the speed is perfect for the inner realms to be a little a little bit multi-dimensional and the outer realms to be singular But in the future, human beings may have multiple bodies and there might be, they might be part of the same mind servers, you know. Just like we have like billionaires attempting philanthropy, in the future there might be collective minds that, you know, allow other collective minds to enter their space. You know what it is? This might sound bizarre, but I have this prediction and it, it's just, I don't know, it's a theological observation, I guess you know <clears throat> where i was like wait a minute that the end of days could the end of days be that moment before god made man could it be that after the apocalypse could it be like the divine journey the thing that adam adam and eve fell from uh, the garden of even from the heavenly state they fell to earth like what if it's a round circle what if at the end of this world, we discover where we began from? Which is such a bizarre concept, but beautiful if reality and time is not moving in a straight line and is moving in spirals. Anytime somebody remembers something, if I was to give it geometry, it would, it would have some sort of spiral geometry. Somebody shared this interesting quote <coughs> from someone named Rilke in the chat section. Thanks for sharing it. The quote says, we are bees of the invisible. We wildly collect the honey of the invisible to store it in the great golden hives of the invisible. This is said by Rilke. Somebody named Rilke. It's a letter from somebody named Rilke to somebody named Hollowick. Wicks. See, guys, yeah, the human beings are different. You know, this is, it, it depends on what you are considering to be your original nature. If you consider the outer realms to be your original nature, you are a conditional being in the outer realms. So your life becomes one of trying to meet conditions till the end of time. If you for a second thought it was like reality was like Alice in Borderland or Squid Game or something and that you had to get out of you had to solve the problem before you know the end of the game which was the end of the lifetime the problem is is in some sense what is the most what is the greatest thing we can do with what we have while we have it this is why I give these talks every day I'm like okay at least we're adding something to something I have wondered, I have wondered, you know, if life was intelligent, if this world was intelligent, what is it doing? 
<clears throat> and then I concluded, what if the world was playing? And people don't realize playing has no reason. Imagine some guy, you know, some scholar, you know, made it to heaven somehow. You know, he got through the pearly gates. You know, this hypothetical story where I'm saying, let's say this scholar got, this philosopher got to heaven. <clears throat> and in heaven, the philosopher said, God, now that I'm in heaven, can I ask a question? And God was like, sure, you could do anything in heaven. You know, <clears throat> and so the guy was like, God, why did you create this world? What was the great reason? What was the great plan? What was the vision you had? Why did you do all of this? What, did, what were you trying to prove and show? <clears throat> and imagine in that moment, God was like, I felt like it. <laughs> or God was like, you know, after you design and you work hard and you, you know, let's say hustle and slave away, you know, it's like after some point, you begin to realize that Once the true nature, you know, it's a sort of different shift in beauty of reality. You know, it's not just like something of shape has beautiful. It's just the opportunity of the presence of attention to be, to be at all, to move at all. We are the movements of an empty world. We are <clears throat> not just its shape. We are the wielders of shape as in, as a sort of in inconceivable witness. We are like... You know, the Upanishads say the seer of the seer, the seer of the scene is unseen. That means what is looking through your eyes cannot be looked at. Welcome to spirituality, dear viewers. This is what it is. It is the discovery of the unknown and the honesty. That there are unknown dimensions in this realm. There's unknown states, you know. <clears throat> there's there's things that have in some sense ancient rhythms. You know, there's some people I see, like, I don't know why my mind, you know, appear, in my inner realms appear this way. But any person I see, do you know what I'm saying? It's not just like the color of their clothing, which suggests to me like a sort of <clears throat> the resonance of their mind. But in some sense, it's as if like what is moving a creature in the middle of nowhere and all answers come to self-projection you see back in the day the early human beings were fearless they were fearless in a way that no human being can be now because they were in a world that had no concept of a world yet <clears throat> but we are so privileged born in a world where we have scholars and historians and the internet it's on walls you know it's like <clears throat> you know there's probably some people in academia who have so many certificates. You go to their home and they're like, yo, is your whole house's wallpaper your certificates? <laughs> <clears throat> and the person's like, you know, the, you know, I just got a few copies in the printer machine, you know. It takes a while for the guests to tell that they're all the same. You know? <laughs> Can you imagine somebody repeating their certificates, their academic certificates as a wallpaper all over their walls, like repeatedly? <clears throat> <clears throat> Who knows, maybe in the future people will like, you know, use these advanced printers and kind of like print their PhD certificates, you know, on their shoes, you know. <laughs> or you look at, you know, Or you look at somebody's jacket and you see inside their jacket like their thesis is written all all behind their jacket cover. You know what I mean? <clears throat> like I think I'm I'm opening up like billion you know billion dollar idea industries here. So some people should definitely do something with these ideas. But what it is is at the end of the day we're like why am I here? And you're an energy and you're left with yourself and yourself is, is codependent with the world and the world has many senses of self within it. And so really to be honest I have <clears throat> you know what it is? It's kind of like like a bird that flies from a branch flies into the sky and then gets tired and then flies back down to the same branch to the same dimension. This might be one of the most bizarre things someone has said, but this planet is the toolbox of another dimension. <clears throat> because it is too unique. 
do you know what I'm saying it's like it's like somebody putting it's like a band putting all the instruments away you know in like a closet or something do you know what I'm saying it's like there's too many unique types of intelligent activity on earth so it's as if something is dropping everybody here imagine like this this is this sound this might sound bizarre but just like objects gravitate to the center of the earth like there was that sort of view in science <clears throat> it's as if what if the earth is also gravitating the consciousness of different life forms in in its environment Terence McKenna talked about the transcendental object uh, at the end of time, as if there is something tra uh, beyond this dimension pulling us outside, like t t pulling us beyond time. The world is obviously too big to know. That means if this life was a game, like definitely the game is not to know everything you know not like to know all everything about the world like we can't know the edge of the universe to index the whole cosmos and to come up with accuracy like reliable accuracy we have a sort of basic accuracy now but <clears throat> it's as if the bigger the world becomes you know uh, the previous dimensions that we held the world in are stretching Oh yeah, Rainer Maria Rilke. Yeah, yeah. That's the person. <clears throat> so anyways, guys, in this episode, uh, re-establishing re the human conscious position, if, if imagine somehow, you know, one day we woke up and we're like, yo, all human beings on Earth in a civilized manner have communicated with each other to try to re-establish a new human archetype so that the future generations are given the greatest of gifts rather than just what, what got, what passed by. Do you know what I'm saying? Like for me, I'm, I'm, you know what it is? This is the thing it is. I feel like the future generations are gonna open their eyes in this world and they're gonna feel like they have to reinvent the wheel and everybody who's alive now has to reinvent the wheels they'll need. <clears throat> that means we are here like gardeners planting seeds for the future generations. We're here like inventors, in some sense, inventing the future before it has arrived. This is the advanced humanity, ladies and gentlemen. You become not just responsible for yourself. You don't become just responsible for your, uh, you know, physical existence and uh, let's say for your family unit, you know, your uh, entourage, your community. Do you know what I'm saying? Your nation. Do you know, it's as if at some point you have to look at yourself in this world and be like, oh my God, I'm a melting candle in a dark room. And what sort of light do I want to see to myself? Because the reason we have been con given consciousness in this plane of existence is to make a decision. <clears throat> which is strange because why would we live a new lifetime if we had to stay the same as before do you see this is the why the concept of trying to stay pure to the past becomes a sort of impurity towards when you when the future arrives do you know <clears throat> so the world is either like we're trying to abide by an original state that never changed or we're trying to change it to go to you know to ride towards the edge of infinity for me, I don't know what it was ever since my mind reached literally like a person climbing a mountain alone, you know, a mountain of ideas alone, you know, suddenly it occurred to me, right, that people have been thought of God's metaphysical routes of justification beyond this dimension. But why haven't we be, been given this great story? Like the samurai had honor. People back in the day, even though kingdoms were savage, when you were part of a kingdom or a knighthood, you had an honor, right? But when you look at the modern human being, it, it has lost its honor. And when it loses its honor, it's mas the masculine energies and the feminine energies in the species are in, under conflict. Do you see what has happened? That means the male energy and female energy should both be collaborating to be, to be building something incredible in the future, which is the future generations. But instead, they are. it's as if somebody has made us forget our future because we thought everything's gonna go extinct and we thought we were just physical beings. And so so in some sense, men and women are fighting among each other. 
Do you see? And so it's as if, if right now I am telling you, whoever you are, I don't even give a shit about the classifications of your status, you know, whether you're a trillionaire, you know, <clears throat> or you're someone who doesn't know where you are. Whoever you are, whatever class of a creature you are, when you realize the life of the species belongs to everyone, then something strange happens. The species becomes the most precious thing on earth. Do you know this might be a bizarre metaphor, but it's as if there's everybody's like a golem looking for their precious. My precious. <laughs> Do you know? And some people, their precious is an object. For some people, their precious is a subject. For some people, their precious is an emotion. Why do you think addictions are popular? The, the entity is choosing to endure the lifetime as an, through an emotional uh, roller coaster. Addiction is a declaration of an emotional entitlement, pretty much. And let me tell you something to any human being that has failed on this earth. When you fail, you might feel like abandoning the Iron Man suit of the archetype you were in. But what I have realized is that in any moment, a person has a capability to look down on themselves and they have a capability to look up to themselves. And you know what's strange? They don't properly teach people the value of the future. And this is why it's so easy to just try to become a non-dualistic kind of like, you know. It's like, you know, I remember, let me tell you something hilarious. Um, in 2013, I was living with my parents and one day my dad comes home and I, I went through a Tibetan Buddhist phase. And I had like these, I went and bought these like traditional Tibetan Buddhist beads and I would, I would just pretty much, I would wear it. And even when I would sleep, it would be in my hand and everything, you know, I was pretty much like in 2013, I broke the world record of pr probably being the most Tibetan Buddhist Persian guy on, on earth in that year. <laughs> and I remember one day I was meditating and my father came home. And his metaphysics and spirituality is not like yoga and Vedanta. You know, he, he's, he's more from the Sufi tradition. And he comes and he says, what are you doing? And I was just sitting cross-legged, you know, with my back against the wall. And I told my father, I'm being, I'm meditating. And he was like, you're being a tree. Get up. <laughs> <clears throat> and I was like, oh my God, I gotta go build an advanced civilization right now. <laughs> see guys uh, somebody in the chat section said there are six states of consciousness not five <clears throat> right the four so I, I don't know how you would perceive beyond the fourth state so the three states are the conscious waking state the dream state the deep sleep state Turiya is the fourth state that's aware of all three at the same time which the only way it's possible is it's a timeless state and so when you are beyond time and beyond space which is a sort of awareness of Turiya there is nothing you can be to have a dimension. That means there is no self to have a dimension of a world and there's no world to have a dimension for a self. Why? Because energy didn't need to prove itself through appearance. This is why <clears throat> in certain religious books, at least I know this of the Islamic one, where it says this is a book for those who have faith in the unseen, in the invisible. Do you understand? People don't realize in the 6th century when religion came, do you know how much weird pantheistic shit was happening? Do you know? People uh, uh, were in some sense like just doing weird rituals. There was magic and the concept of curses, which was pretty much people being creepy in front of one another. Do you know? <coughs> And so eventually humanity reached a point where we were like, yo, we're not a freaking monkey. <laughs> <laughs> and
And now I'm saying the species has reached a point where every moment my brain gets a new angle of perception and has to reassimilate the whole t scenario. Why do we blink? Because the brain's like, oh yeah, let me recheck everything. So anyways, dear viewers, <clears throat> I'm going to go into a cold tunnel. Somebody suggested this author. Why not? Let's let's read some quotes. <coughs> so Rainer Maria Rilke and all these quotes I'm reading, guys, like I'm just gonna say RMR, okay? Rainer Maria Rilke. RMR says, and now we welcome the new year full of things that have never been. Rilke says the only journey is the one within. That's what's up. Rainer, Rainer Maria Rilke says if your daily life seems poor, <clears throat> do not blame it. Blame yourself that you're not poet enough to call forth its riches. For the create for the creator there is no poverty. Wow. Wow. Exactly. Because the creator is enough. For a truly religious man. Do you know what it is? It's as if in the middle of a temporary survival, he's been given access to a, a, a VIP room where his faith calms his presence before the personality doubts its truth. You see, we're multidimensional beings, but these multiple dimensions are being experienced in a singular way. <clears throat> so far as, an, as a sort of explorer of dimensions, I have, I have made this bold claim a sort of you know, this is my way of making my mark in the history books. Aside from, you know, being one of the pioneers, one of the first people, you know, one of the first, you know, birds to sing the bird song of the advanced civilization. Rainer Maria Rilke says, let life happen to you. Believe me, life is, life is in the right, always. Yeah, because why wouldn't we trust somewhere that we just got to? Do you know what I'm saying? I think children cry when they're like newborn children cry because they're like, I have so much trust in this world. You know, <laughs> Rainer Maria Rilke says once the realization is accepted that even between the closest human beings, infinite distances continue, a wonderful living so a wonderful living side by side can grow if they succeed in loving the distance between them which makes it possible for each to see the other whole against the sky to see the other whole against the sky that means will there come a time where you will look at your fellow human being and not see an incomplete being not see a distorted being whether good or bad but you see a complete being you see a being that has entered the hall of existence called earth anybody who's made it to earth good job whatever kind of being you are now the next thing is if you want to get to the next place you know i wish i had the squid games kind of like soundtrack <laughs> <clears throat> guys i've seen so many Japanese shows with like English subtitles that I think subconsciously I know how to speak Japanese you know maybe in my sleep one day I'll speak like perfect Japanese you know <clears throat> and make sure Commander Erwin Smith gets to the basement the poetry of fiction and non-fiction you see the cool thing about when, it, when I, i'm a person who writes i write stories i <clears throat> create uh, you know fictional realities on paper with ink <laughs> with internal insight and vision <clears throat> and when you come to create a world i don't know if anybody's done this but this is one of the most enlightening and liberating exercises you can do Go pick up a piece of paper and a pen or go buy a sketchbook. And 
I want you to create a character and a world from scratch. I'm going to give the viewers of this channel a writing and a writing exercise. <clears throat> like free like a freestyle writing exercise. Okay, and I want the viewers <coughs> to write down what they know honestly to be their truth. When it comes to creating a world, you know. I mean, you could do this on another piece of paper, but <clears throat> the idea is, is I want the viewers to realize that when you come to create a, if you make it bad at the beginning, your experience is good. Why? Because the creature, it has opted into that archetypal relationship. You know, there was an important point in the Avengers, in the last Avengers movie, that they had to go beyond time to fix what an issue in time. And sometimes we have to go beyond ourselves to notice parts to ourselves that we couldn't notice where, where before we, our comfortable convi convictions shackled us to our past. You see, the brain is pretty much like has ambitions of being a photographer. Do you know? <clears throat> when, when I see an attractive, you know, you know, an attractive lady pass by, for me, my like, yo, you, have, I, have, I, have has my face become a professional, like, fo like camera? <laughs> You know, like, <laughs> <clears throat> I think, you know, some of the most advanced cameras and surveillance systems can be created with how, you know, men, you know, uh, observe their surroundings, you know, and the opposite sex. <laughs> Rainer Maria Rilke says, a person who isn't who they are during the last conversation you had with them, they're who they've been throughout your whole relationship. <clears throat> they're who they've been throughout your whole relationship. Oh yeah, that means it's showing their true nature. Yeah, you know, I, I, there was a time where I was like, man, of course, you know, the world is a story, so this is why people can lie, right? And they could just say a deceptive story. But then I thought, like, what advantage does lying have? Like, we're temporary beings. You know, the cultivation, our inner nature is more important than, uh, you know... There's something going on here where it seems to be every being is living an inner life and an outer life at the same time. And just like we have two eyes that see the same moment, we, we are like, we have an inner realm and an outer realm. We have an invisible sub, you know, mind space for subjective imagery to move. You know, and so, and you know what it is when I realized this, for me, it was like my own discovery, but then I realized many had come up with terms for it. For example, Descartes called it qualia. You know, for me, in the inner realms, it was like a kind of like glowing word that just connected everything. I was like, what have I been doing saying in my imagination or I'm imagining like a fool, like, like, you know, like a, like, like a naive, like, you know, guy with a box on his head. Like, you know, <laughs> it's like this whole time I realized, oh my God, you know, imagination is my inner life. It's how an event is taking place behind my eyes. Or uh, if I open my eyes, if you really train your inner realms, what you can uh, envision accurately when you close your eyes, you can actually see it. So what that means is like, you know, sometimes I remember early on, there would be moments where I would close my eyes and speak. And then I reached a point where it didn't matter if my eyes were closed or not. Do you know, the inner realms, I could see the inner realms in front of me, literally. So that means sometimes when I'm giving these talks, what I'm seeing when I'm speaking to the viewers is like maybe like, like five, 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 seven meters in front of me, or not five, seven meters, maybe like four meters in front of me being visualized. So imagine like if the third eye, <laughs> I'm saying imagine, this is hypothetical. So imagine if the third eye was like a old school film projector and everything you imagined it projected in front of you. And imagine one, some, one time where you couldn't imagine, like your imagination was out of control. You just put your palm on your forehead and you're like, yo, where did my thoughts go? 
Let me tell you, we are a creature which strangely appears to be naked in other dimensions. So in this dimension, we're wearing clothes. We're like, yo, man, I got, I got this. What, what, what are the popular brands? Like Versace naked in an unknown world, you know? <laughs> Sorry, guys, I'm being, you know, <laughs> playful. I'm being metaphoric here. What I mean is that if you don't realize what is looking out through your eyes, what was the point of looking out through them? Who was looking out through your eyes? This is one of those great mysteries that will lead anybody to be an excellent scholar of the realm. We're living at a time where, let me tell you what it is, the future generations are awakening to it. They're like, yo, the past doesn't know what it's doing. You know, they, it's like the future generations are realizing a lot of the suffering of the human species that, were, that are more alive now is because of their past. Do you know most people are suffering because of their past? Do you know? <clears throat> you know? And it's strange, this world is literally like a Tetris game. Your decisions are, are suggesting how much space there is for your next decision to flow in. Rainer Maria Rilke says, for one human being to love another, that is perhaps the most difficult of all our tasks, the ultimate, the last test and proof, the work for which all other work is but preparation. That's the advanced civilization. Guys, I'm telling you, it, I'm, I'm this guy who started reading all these quotes from ancient times, and it, to me, it was as if they were predicting the advanced civilization. That is the greatness of mankind. It's as if God created, if you were religious hearing me, because there's billions of religious people, I've started to consider speaking to a religious audience more directly. If you're a religious person, God has created something. God has created you. So technically, like from a viewpoint, you're God's invention. And you think God's invention is not great? Do you think God created an imperfect invention? Do you know what I'm saying? We are living in a pre-greatness world. I'm just saying there is a post-greatness world. For now, it's in our inner realms, but it could be in our outer realms. And we need strategic leaders. Do you know? We need, <clears throat> you know, believe it or not, we need the playfulness. Just like how we see so many people collaborating and working together in these online multiplayer video games right to, to achieve the quests and tasks it's as if all we need is to create a quest list that will lead towards an advanced civilization i'm trying to build the most if i i'm waiting for the resources to gravity you know what it is i'm just this person like there was a scene in the movie attila i think it was attila the hun i don't know what it was it was one of those war movies old school war movies and this guy who was like an emperor or something right was attila like this warlord he was in this is sitting in this cage and he was a prisoner and he was meditating and there's this strange scene where this holy man comes up to him and says i've seen a vision that you will bring a storm to this town and you will destroy everything but don't destroy the temple and this holy man gets a vision as if he's living ahead of time. And so he goes to this being who's going to, going to bring chaos to that town. Right? And Attila just knows everything that's happening is like confirmation of destiny for him. Right? <clears throat> and even though he does something messed up and people were savages back in the day. But what I'm trying to say now is I have this feeling that something great is happening on earth and for the first time ever the history books will record a revolution that is going beyond just subjective limitation that means it's as if culturalism began suffocating the human being and suddenly our humanism like a lion roared and all the hyenas uh, all the uh, inefficient systems it's like ran away why because man was made truly Whatever you are, you see, this is the beautiful thing that all creatures in all fathomable dimensions in all worlds need to comprehend. That if you are created, you are imbued with the characteristics of that which has created you. Which is another way of saying nobody belongs or, or matter can, could never own anything. And the mind that owned belonged to a soul that was never here. 
And when I say sold, I was never here. I'm talking about how uh, there's a sort of, these are levels to reality, right? A person's like, yo, I'm seeing something. I can touch it. All right, it's physical. I close my eyes. I see something. Okay, all right, non-physical. I can't touch my imagination. You know, I can't I can't go sit in the Ferrari in my imagination. <laughs> you know? <clears throat> but I can see it. You know, I can see that Ferrari, you know? I can see myself in the Ferrari. My mind can even try to extrapolate emotions from that inner realm Im image. I've done that sometimes. Sometimes I've been so, <clears throat> you know, I mean, it's not, an, I mean, it's, I'm just saying this as a sort of, you know, <clears throat> just tiny battle scar. But there was a moment where I just found myself just, I had this, I was just self-isolating myself. <clears throat> and in that self-isolation, it's strange, you know, it's kind of like. I don't know how to say it. When a person is left with their own self, they have no choice other than to get to know it. And when I was younger, I thought it was a karmic exile. I was like, cosmos, why am I getting to watch more of life happen than actually be the thing that's happening? Do you know? And then I realized this was a gift. It was as if the universe like a slingshot, like people don't realize. <clears throat> All people who are shy, you're like literally like as the slingshots being pulled back. It's like archery, the bows being held back. And suddenly, you know, there comes a moment where the shy person cannot hold it in and then the real self just releases, you know. Because what it is, is it, what, what we get emotional about is change. I mean, look at it. You, you give a, ch a young child, a toddler, a toy. The child is happy. You take the toy away. The child cries. You give the toy back. The child is happy. You take away the toy. The child cries, right? So, so what does that mean? That means we are reactive creatures. When something happens, we react to it. Do you know and that reaction is important because it's our mind reacting to it so it means our life force is engaging the content the new content the novelty you know and i've been like am i the same person every day uh, when i wake up or is that an illusion i tell myself to ignore how fast the world is really actually happening you know who says there isn't beings faster than light you know we know sp scientists say space moves faster than light if space was alive ta-da you know a, a being that moves faster than light and really people are seeking to the texture of reality I remember hearing a very profound sentence uh, you know from Noam Chomsky where he was saying like we we, have, we we don't know how to define materialism like how are people defining materialism because your part of your definition is an abstract psychological non-physical act <clears throat> so it's fair to say that human beings, let's, I mean, if, 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 if like a young kid came, like if I had a, you know, <clears throat> let's say if my, in the future, if I had a daughter or a son and they came up to me and they were like, Papa within. <laughs> <clears throat> if my children were like, you know, how do you explain dimensions? I'll be like, yo, solid liquid gas kids, you know, that's kind of life. Your mind is like training, like a sort of liquid state. Your body is surviving as a solid entity, right? Your soul is that which is aware as the whole moment where both of these events are happening. So you see, you're not your biological system. You are a cognitive awareness to your biological system and what the mystics realize is that you're not even a cognitive system you are an unknown instantaneous witnessing force of the cognitive system what that means is that awareness that notices it's a mind moving a body is instantaneously being everything to know it as such And so to reestablish the human conscious position, what is consciousness? Consciousness is your antenna. Dear viewers, you are an antenna. What signals are you receiving from reality? What do you care about? Who are you? You know, 
one of the most beautiful moments of life was when I was like, who the fuck am I? I don't even, as, as, a, as an intelligence in this realm, I don't even know what how this intelligence is. It's like, what's the true mystery behind consciousness? Why is it that I, I can consciously move my hands in the air, but I can't like consciously r move my organs in my body? Do you know what I'm saying? It's like it's like some parts of life are involuntary. It's, a, it's as if something in life was like, okay, you want consciousness, you can't have all of it, but I'll let you control like, you know, the skeletal system. <laughs> and we're like yo that's not enough and it's like okay i'll let you control do you know in some sense the, the cognitive system and so the thing is this is the issue with power do you know when you give someone too much power they take it for granted and they tend to misuse that power why do you think the world has you know a hatred for you know the princes and uh, princesses and you know they the children of the aristocracy and they shouldn't because on some level we're all in an unknown world nobody knows nobody knows everybody's like yo this is the best projection i have for me really you know some people may you know some people may uh, you know elevate who I am you know I from the beginning of these talks I was like I'm not an enlightened guru I'm mister within just some guy just some human being that's alive that has realized that the mind moves in ways that our body inspires do you know this is something which is kind of embarrassing to share, but I'll share it because I think it can contribute to scientific research and discovery. <laughs> and excuse me for saying this, but I'm going to say it. So there was a time, and I'm going to try to say this discreetly. There was a time where I wanted to comprehend the human body and I wanted to understand what is it about certain images that for example animate <laughs> the human the male reproductive organ okay and I was in some sense looking at different pictures and I was like wait a minute it's a shape curvature and ratio and it blew my mind it blew my mind that our hormonal activation for our attraction to the other sex do you know to the uh, to, to the other uh, to the other side of the species do you know what i'm saying it's it's as if it's there's a sensory interpretation there is let's say uh, form uh, formono like uh, 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 let's say yours there's a, all the five senses are engaged but when it comes to the senses of the eyes the eyes are reacting to a shape that means what if the subconscious like let's say somebody holds a finds a picture of a very attractive woman and some guys looking at it and what if their brains like wow what an attractive woman do you know <clears throat> you know I better not you know uh, be outside <laughs> And so, what is going on? The, and the subconscious, the argument for the subconscious is that the subconscious can tell apart. The subconscious just she's, sees geometry, shape, and color. But it is, it is in some sense that self-organizing force. We are the only power source. Because if the presence of the individual is, discon is not disconnected from the collective, the coll collective has been here. <clears throat> that means it's as if we're like, who is living here? Is it an object? Is it a subject? Or is it the whole moment? And usually when you experience, you meet the presence of your own unknown moment, either you have the contentment of your unknown self or you don't. If you don't, you, you, you just solidify yourself. Think of it this way, the more selfish you are, the more solid of an entity you become. The more selfless you are, the more like steam you become. So your karma is similar. Based on the state of your acceptance, the state of your reception is future receptions being created. It's another way of saying, 
how you live now suggests what sort of memories your future self has to work with. Anyways, thank you for listening. I hope this episode was helpful. <clears throat> Share, subscribe, comment, and like. And the main point of the episode was that there's a dynamic component to human intelligence. We've been treating ourselves. We're living in a world of nouns, but we're actually on known verbs. So in a world of known nouns, fighting over truth, we're realizing we're unknown verbs and a new era of comprehending human nature is arising and dawning upon us. <clears throat> Once the heroes of the past have kept the, have, have stabilized the past and for the future generations, then the novel performances begin. What that means is it's like a lineup. Right now, <clears throat> many past programs are closing for new programs to begin. It's as if this, this species is going through a <clears throat> global cultural metamorphosis. And so, as Mr. Within has said, an advanced civilization is the future's birthright. As this fictional character in this show, Shingeki no Kyojin, said, you know, life is not meaningless. We live for those who will discover and realize the meaning one day. We are living for how great. We're living for the greatness of our world. Because what else can we do? We are its presence. Our mind is the presence of the world. Our mind is in a hidden romance with reality. It's, our, it's like our mind loves being the world. But when it stops loving, it's like when, it, when, the, when a sort of self-obsession, how would I say it? It's kind of like every human being is self-obsessed because of the required necessity of survival. But after your self-obsession is satisfied, your, your survival and your psychological, let's say, self-obsession is satisfied, then you become a neutral. You become a, I don't know how to say it, what the term would be, a cultural neutrino, like neut a neutral particle. You become an observer. So I have this view that even before giving this talk, I was a presence, really. And then I chose to sit down, the vision of the th talk came into my mind, and then I accepted, made a decision, and then the rest was the archetype. It's so incredible when you are honest and you trust the world, the world reveals its rhythms to you, and it's as if you feel like you're not just living on a planet, you're living with a planet. You know, this world is uh, the roommate of our consciousness. <laughs> We have to, do you know what I'm saying? We're living, do you know? It, it's as if like, you know, space and matter are married. And, uh, you know, inconceivable is celebrating their marriage. We are a multidimensional being. Multiple dimensions are sponsoring us. The best thing we can do is, that's why, why do you think religions are like, be grateful? Because man doesn't know the incredible amount of uh, interdimensional assistance which is another way of saying there is a self-organizing program to this universe so it's kind of like you start off not knowing who you are you get the feeling the world is trying to change you but then when you trust the world the world is actually trying to wake you up when the world wakes you up all the new age people's synchronicities are pointing you to a realization that the power that you are seeing outside of yourself is actually being experienced internally and when you realize everything that you have received from these mr within lectures everything you have ever heard in this lifetime in all lifetimes in all realities where has all experiences of all possible realities gone that means somebody was like hey Buddha there's a transmigratory soul and this soul is having memories what are we are we just reincarnating from lifetime to lifetime uh, and and uh, and creating memories for the universal self are we like drones are we like information gatherers for higher dimensions <clears throat> and that's why the world is so information oriented and at some point, you just, you know, in some of the moments where I've had the most complex, philosophical, like bizarre, you know, I, I don't know how to like live after this idea kind of moments, right? 
and oh you know in those moments suddenly i've noticed like a bird on a branch just staring and i'm like wow life can also be experienced in much simpler levels so it's we choose the gears our perception move through you know and i'm someone who i was looking for the most powerful archetype on the planet and you know what it is it's benevolence that's the cheat code if, if this was like a gta or a sims game and you, back in the day you could put cheat codes on pcs <clears throat> in, in computer video games benevolence is is the shortcut that means if, if let's say right now you're a cruel tyr tyrannical dictator if you just start being benevolent from the day afterwards and benevolence means you love care and honor and live for the greatness of the life that is challenging that is uh, it's like the true enemy of the species is not is is non-existence why do you think there is a might behind the words i'm saying because it's important what happens to us and what happens to the legacy of humankind you know I think no person just wants a couple grandkids being like, good job, grandpa. Nobody wants that. People want an advanced species. That's what we want. And in order to access an advanced species, we require to be advanced beings. And so, who knew? <clears throat> the clarity and truth we sought outside was the, was the one seeking. What is looking for truth is where truth is accept your presence and walk among the advanced humanity because once you have come to the here and now once you have truly experienced a non-dualistic moment once you reach that spiritual maturity you're gonna realize oh my god this this soul and spirit I was looking for has always been here this lifetime is new and then you will suddenly realize do you know what I'm saying it's as if we're like crew members as Buckminster Fuller and Marshall McLuhan said we're crew members of spaceship earth And as crew members of Spaceship Earth, it's as if one crew member has awakened and it's like, yo, we got so much work to do. Yo, everybody at their stations. Do you know? Because how else does it work? We have to trust our greatest vision. Because why else do we have access to it? You know? I asked a great man. What is your view on death? And you know what he said? I'll say it like this. Someone once asked someone, What do you do if death comes? And the person says, I'll do the best I can. And that was an answer. That was an answer to how do you approach this life? You are a being that has never existed before. And there are many ways, many secret ways your mind is working to yourself, like hidden applications that only you can see and others cannot. And Mr. Within is here to say that once you trust, just try it out. There's three things you can trust in this world and distrust, right? You can either trust the self, you can trust others, or you could trust the world. Three things. Or you can trust God, which is like the Turiya state of the planet, which would be the inconceivable, which is another, that would, that's another context, that opens up another context. But pretty much think of it this way, self, world, and I could say God or world. Uh, self, others, and then world or God, whichever you want to see. So, imagine, so what does that mean? Let's, let's go with self, others, world. This means that you have an option to either trust or distrust yourself in this lifetime, in the moment even. You have an option to trust and distrust your species and others and other beings around you. And you have uh, an opportunity, you have also the ability to trust or distrust the world. And Mr. Within is telling you an advanced civilization will not arise because the most advanced beings cannot arise unless they are in the most advanced world. So we have to, in, in some sense, you know, this was my task, which I feel, I don't know. Who knows? There's, you know, there's moments where I feel like maybe thousands of years in the future in battlefields, you know, certain, you know, like these talks will linger. 
Do you know if these talks have truly come from an eternal place, they will have an eternal mark in this world. This is my view. And so whatever continues from the Mr. Within archetype in this world, this is my own resolve. Mr. Within is just that archetype that appears any time a civilization has a potential to advance. It's an archetype for a species. It's a pointer. It's like saying, hey, behind your eyes is the map to the meaning in front of it. Rise, mankind, rise. Thank you for listening. Much love. Namaste.